Hi everyone, welcome to the first video for the Living Up channel. I'm glad that you have decided to join me today. Uh, today I'm going to be making a journal from file folders and I'm going to also be using some duo tangs or also known as report covers. Uh, why I'm making this video is that these are supplies that some of us have in abundance. I have tons of report covers from when my kids were in school and um, there's always extra file folders lying around. You can also pick them up for a buck for 10 of them at the dollar store in most places. So it's a, it's a great project to use up extra supplies that you have. Now I am going to be creating mine with a piece of canvas that I'm going to be painting on. There are tons of other things that you can use. Uh, you could use old blue jeans would be great. They're very canvas like material. Um, I talk a little bit about maybe using an old quilt and anything really it's up to your imagination. Now, when I'm making the journal in this video, please be aware that I don't normally do single page signatures. And by single page single page signatures, I, what I mean is this is a normal signature that I would make for the journals that I sell. Um, essentially, it is five pieces of cardstock that I have folded and I stack them together in the group of five. Just find the center one here. And I keep them in a group of five and then I will stitch them through. This is what I call a signature in my regular journal. Five sheets of cardstock. In this one, we're going to be doing signatures, just one file folder or one report cover each. So this is what the journal looks like that we're going to be finishing here. It does have a, a ribbon that wraps around and ties in a bow, as you will see. And when you open it up, you're going to see i got lots of room to smush lots of stuff in there. I have a nice big spine. I have built this one very specifically. I do have something in mind for it. Um, why I decided I wanted to use up the report covers, but what's nice about them is, you know, I can have a nice stack of pages that I've written on a certain topic in here. And then I can do an art journal spread in the file folders that relate to that topic. And before I go ahead and use these journals, I will normally prepare them with gesso. Gesso is just an acrylic primer. It's white. You lay it down. It comes in different colors as well. Uh, another thing that you can use is just plain old white acrylic paint from the craft store. Really not a big deal. This is your journal. This is something that you get to choose. So if you're ready, uh, I'm going to talk about supplies at the very beginning of the video and then we are going to get started. So you guys have a lovely time. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, please feel free to like, share and comment. Okay, so let's go over the supplies that I'm going to be using for my file folder journal. Um, I've got some, this is 7 ounce cotton duck canvas that I buy to paint on, but you can also pick up canvas or any kind of fabric at your local fabric store. Um, it just depends on what you want to build it with. I like the working with a fabric cover because I like to sew my signatures into there. If you don't know what a signature is, a signature is just your group of paper that you're going to use. Sometimes I will have three to five folded pieces of like a heavy cardstock in my regular journals. For this, I'm going to sew each signature individually. And by signature, I mean my file folders. And then I have um, duotangs or they may also be called report covers. So to prepare these, I have just opened them up and, so that I have a nice, my spine is nice and flat so that when I'm ready to mark it and stitch the pages in, I'm good to go. So I have 10 file folders and nine of these duo tags that I'm gonna be using. This is a great way to use up all those old supplies. I'm also using, um, acrylic paint, just a white acrylic paint. If you have gesso, great. If you know what gesso is, gesso is just a primer that artists use. Um, I can't get any locally here. I have to order it in. So for today, I'm going to be using just plain white paint from the dollar store. I also have um, some ribbon that I'm going to be using to finish it later. You're going to want to measure out and it just depends on how that you want to decorate your journal. Okay. I prefer to use waxed dental floss um, in my journals just because the wax slides through easily. It's very 
tough and durable. It's got a little bit of give to it. You need some kind of punching instrument. Now this is obviously a corn cup holder. I've trimmed off one space on it or one tine on it so that I have a nice punch. I've also used awls. This is a, a large one here, so just an awl. If you have your hands on one, they're very handy. And of course you'd want a, a nice thin one because you don't want big gaping holes in your journal. I've also used thumbtacks, just regular push pins when push comes to shove and that works just as well. You want a pair of scissors. Now this is just regular thread. You could use this to stitch your journal as well. Um, I would definitely double it up if you're going to do that. I do find that because of the thinness, it really likes to slice through the paper if you pull too hard, which is one of the reasons why I like the dental floss. You're gonna want a nice needle with a nice big head on it. So uh, this is just a pack of needles I picked up from the dollar store. Of course, you can get specialty needles for sewing books. I just use the basic supplies. They work just well, for, they work just fine for me. I've also used embroidery floss. This is nice when I'm doing my smaller journals that I sell because I can, I, it's a decent thickness and I can match the color to whatever journal that I'm making. Really, it's all personal preference. Pencil and a ruler. Of course, you're also gonna need a paintbrush. Um, I would go with something at least an inch in width just because when you're priming your, your canvas, it'll take you forever if you're using a tiny little brush you could also go with something a little bigger. <laughs> this is a very well-loved brush that I use to uh, gesso canvases before I paint. You can see that I've had it for a long time and my dogs have, you know, lovingly chewed it for me. All right, I think that's all we need for basic supplies. So I am going to, first of all, measure out how big I want my cover to be. So I know that I want it at least the width of my duotangs and journals. Um, when I'm looking at this, I see that the duotang is a little bit narrower than I want. I wanna make sure that I'm covering the outside edge of this file folder. So I'm gonna use my file folder to measure. So I know that I'm gonna want it to open up. So I'm gonna be trimming the edges once I paint. So I know I want it at least to here. So I'm just going to make a mark. I also want it, I'm going to get it straight. This is the bottom of my file folder. The file folder is the longest of all the items I have in there. So as long as I've covered the size of the file folder, I'm good. I'm also going to want to add maybe a centimeter just to give me a little extra space. I'm just going to make a mark here and I'm just going to extend it out past the file folder. Next, I need to know how thick I want my spine to be because I use these books for art journals. I am going to want to make sure I give myself lots of space because I tend to stuff them with lots of things. And one of the beautiful things about using the report covers in this is that I can go in and put lined paper in. I could go in and I could hole punch other pieces of art that I want. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how big the spine of my book is going to be. So I know that I want good amount of space between each of my signatures. Yeah. If I do them this way, I will get them all level. Okay. So here we go. So, like I said, I want a good amount of space between each of my signatures. I think that is about the depth that I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the depth that I want. So I know I want, oh, let's go about seven centimeters. Seven centimeters will give me lots of room to stuff the pages in between. So that seven centimeters I'm going to have to add to where my duotang came over. So we're going to lay this back out again. I'm, I'm not being precise with my measurements. I will cut this as square as I can once I paint and prep the canvas. So here is the end of my journal. I'm just going to make a mark with my pencil. I know I want to add seven centimeters for the spine. 
So that's for the spine. Also, I'm going to make a flap on it. So I'm going to want at least another seven centimeters to stretch out here. And then I want it to come over a little bit. So I'm going to add another seven centimeters for the folding part. <coughs> so essentially I'm going to take my canvas and for, for the one I'm doing, I'm going to want 21 additional centimeters. That's where, oh, and that's essentially how I measure out the size of my journal. That way I know I'm going to have lots of room to fold over the flap and to cover my spine when my book is nice and full. Because I'm using fabric, <coughs> excuse me, once I attach my ribbon to it, I'll be able to secure it at whatever depth it is that sort of however full my journal is. I'll be able to keep it nice and tight. Now there are other things that you could use for making your journal. I have, um, I thought about using large envelopes. Those would be great. It's a great way to use up junk mail. I've also made journals using uh, cereal boxes because the cardboard is great. So if you're going to be making an art journal, you want something nice and durable, something that's going to last a long time. And I like working on a nice stiff surface. So you know, once you prime all of your pages, it doesn't really matter what surface it is that you're working on. So go ahead and use up any scraps and junk that you have. And that is part one. I'm gonna keep it nice and square. Since I already have a square straight edge here. Now I do cut it a little bit bigger and then I trim it once I've applied the primer. And the reason I like using plain canvas is because I can for one thing, like I said, it's malleable. It, it folds nicely. For another thing, it's kind of like a painting. I can use it to do whatever I want on my journal. Okay, so we determined that the length was going to be about here. Let's try and keep it straight. Of course, I can trim it once I'm done painting. Okay. So, there we go. I have the size that I need. It might be hard for you to see because I'm not using a marker, but remember the width of your paper when it's folded open, the depth of your spine, um, the depth of your spine again, and then if you want an overlap, however much you want your overlap to be. Take my scissors and give it a trim. Now remember I said I like to go a little bit over, so. I made this mark a little bit over from where I actually need it. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat today. And I'm going to trim the bottom. Now, some people are afraid of a blank canvas. I, for one, thrilled when I have a nice white canvas. I love it. Nothing makes me happier than having a nice space to work on and just all the possibilities that it has. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is my canvas. Now I've got my measurements on the outside. It really, really doesn't matter what side you want to paint on because I've already got my measurement. Well, I'm gonna end up using them again. Like I said, so it doesn't matter what side you're going to paint on. Let's pa I'm going to paint on this side. That way I can cover up the pencil marks I just used. I'm going to use my nice big brush. Oh. To put paint. I'm going to cover this whole thing in paint. I'm going to hang it to dry. And when I'm ready, I will come back. Okay. You can see here I have painted my strip of canvas. And I'm hanging it with clothes pegs just to dry. Um, if the wrinkles really bother you, you could add a little weight to the bottom here, just with the clothespin. Add some kind of weight to it just to kind of pull out the wrinkles. I do find that most of the wrinkles come out while it's drying. And then once I start painting my other layer on it, um, there's very few wrinkles left. Also, what wrinkles are left, I just find it is character for my journal. So that, I'm going to leave it now. Let it dry for probably an hour or so, depending on how warm your house All is. All right, my canvas is nice and dry. I've picked my paint colors. Right now, I am only going to uh, paint the background of my journal cover. Uh, the more detailed stuff I want to do after I've stitched it all together because I don't know how 
exactly the flap is going to fit and I haven't really decided what I want on it but I do know what colors I want for my background. So I'm going to do a very very simple wash background. Uh, I do really do like my uh, golden fluid acrylics. Um, I love them. I love the pigment load in them. There's absolutely no reason you couldn't use a craft store acrylic. The only hesitation I have with the the craft store acrylics is um, they may crack. So if you have some kind of a medium that you can add to them just to make them a little more flexible. The craft stores also sell a fabric medium. You can just mix a little in with your craft store acrylics. And then you don't have to worry as much about cracking when you're opening and closing your journal cover. But really, this is a personal journal cover for me. As things wear and age, I just, I like that they give them more character and, you know, every little crack and bump and spill tells a story in my journal. So I know that I want a very yellowy green background and I'll show you what I use for inspiration. These are journal covers that I had made ahead of time for the journals that I sell at craft markets and online. And I was going through the colors of the ones I have in here and really, I would really, I really love the, the yellow and the green. It's springtime here right now and these are just colors that make me feel very sunshiny and happy. So I'm going to do something similar to this. I'm going to wash some yellow and a little bit of green, maybe a little bit of blue in there. We're just going to see how it goes. Okay. So I know I want yellow as my main color, so I'm going to get some yellow in there. And I know that I want some green. I don't quite want them touching yet. I want to be able to add it in a little bit later. Don't need too much. I am going to water this down a bit. If this was um, an artwork that I was going to sell, I definitely would not be adding water to my acrylics, but this is a journal cover for me so I'm not so worried about longevity and paint adhesion and all the technicality that goes with it. I am using just a nice soft brush that I've bought at the hardware store and you can see that I like it quite a lot. It's probably about, I don't know, an inch and a half wide. Does it stay on here? Yep, yeah, an inch and a half. So I've got lots of water on there. If I wanted to, I could even wet my canvas a little bit before I start and I am just going to start. flip it over. Now my book is essentially going to be like this and then the flap is going to come over a bit. I don't know if I want it like that. So we could also try it the other way. Look over here. Oh, see now I like that much better. So I'm going to stick with this. So I know that this is going to be the top. This is going to be my flap. So I'm just going to open it up, grab my report cover and start measuring. All right, so I want to find the straightest edge of my fabric. I'm going to trim off the little frilly ends from the canvas. They're nice and stiff. They're much easier to cut. Everything keeps a much straighter line once your paint is dry. Okay, what about this laid flat? That looks pretty straight. I'll grab my ruler. All right, I got a clear one here. And I'm just going to start marking my edges. As I said, when you paint the canvas, it does stop a lot of the fraying. And once it's once the paint is completely dry and has hardened up, you don't have to worry about fraying at all. It's very similar to working with a really nice soft piece of leather. Straight line. 
Okay, and then we've got my top marked. I just want to fold the two sides together just to see. Make sure that I'm fairly square. I'm not terribly precise with my measurement. <laughs> so, let's just see how it lines up. Okay, you can see how I have a little a little bit of an overlap here and here. So I'm just going to take my ruler and kind of mark a straighter edge. And just trim that. Same on this side. This side is still kind of damp, so it's not quite as easy to cut into if it was more, if the paint had cured a little more, it was more dry, it would be a little easier. Actually, be a lot easier. So, got that one done. And here was my other mark. Okay, so at the beginning I had mentioned that I have 10 file folders and 10 duotang. Now, in a lot of books that I make, I will often stick folded sheets together in a signature. Because of the thickness of the paper in this one and what I'm going to be doing, I'm actually going to sew each signature individually. That takes It's going to take a really long time because it means I'm sewing 19 separate signatures in there. Essentially, this is what my book is going to look like after. I'm very happy with that. I don't know if I'm going to go with the yellow ribbon. Mm, not sure. We'll see what happens when we go along. Okay. So for my first signature, I'm going to line up my file first file folder and use it as a guide. Right about there. Now I always do this with the first one. Because this gives me my first line for where I'm going to be stitching my signatures. And I like to mark out the lines ahead of time. I find that it makes it easier for me. And I'm going to talk about spacing out your stitches in just shortly here but for, I'm going to do this part first. So I'm not working in inches, I'm working in centimeters. So I'm just going to mark my seven centimeters because I know that's going to be the end of my spine. And my book is going to feel really loose at the beginning but before I know it I'm going to have it filled up with loads of amazing art and thoughts and whatever it is that I want to gather. Okay, so I'm going to make another line here. So if you think 19 signatures, now I've got two lines. Essentially, I'm going to need 17 more. So I'm going to need to do a little math. Each signature we have is going to have three stitching holes. I'm just going to use inches because sometimes if it works out to inches, it's a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick. Take your signature and have it open. This is just easier than doing the math. What we want, we want to have three evenly spaced stitching marks. So, you see, I'm just pressing down here. I've, I've 
um, fold it in half. I'm pressing a mark here. I don't want to wreck the whole thing. I do want to be able to make myself a template. I'm going to use this one for a template. So I folded that half in half. And now I have one crease, two crease. I'm going to make my third crease here by doing the same with the top. Line it up. Okay. So I've got three creases, three creases right here. I've got one here, one here, one here. This is where my stitch is going to go. <coughs> There's quite a large gap in here because it is so long. Normally in my journals, I don't have so much of a gap. I'm almost wondering if I should make an additional one. I don't think it's really necessary for the purpose of what I'm doing. Okay, I've got my trusty little corn cob holder. I'm just going to stab a hole in each one of these. So this is my template. So I'm going to start by lining up with my first line. I just like making stitching guides because I find it easier for myself. You don't have to do this. But again, I find it easier. So I'm going to take a marker. I can also mark the outside of where my holes are. I'm going to use this as my template. Line it up with my lines. I'm going to make a quick reference to where the bottom of my file folder is sitting. Just straight across here so I know this is what I'm measuring against. So I've got my 19 lines here. They are not perfectly even spaced. I'm probably going to eyeball it and fix them a little bit as I go along. So I'm going to mark my three dots for line one. And my three for line two. And I'm going to keep going like that. Another way I could do it is to just simply take my ruler. and make notes, note there, and then on wherever the lines of course are intersecting, that is where I'm going to be stitching. Okay, now comes the fun part. <laughs> this is where I'm going to start stitching. And I'm going to stitch every one of these signatures individually. And I didn't think I was going to film this right now, so I'm not quite organized. I will pause the video, get all of my stuff together, and then we'll start again. Okay, so I've got all of my signatures together. I've gone ahead and threaded my piece of dental floss. I've got about a meter here. Uh, if, if you're using Imperial, it's about a yard. I'm just guessing that that's approximately what I'm going to need right now. Do not make a knot on the end. This is just single threaded with a tail hanging out. The first thing I need to do is go through all of my signatures and mark my cutting line. So I've got my template that I made. I'm just going to line them up. If you have a binder clip or something where you can clip the two together, sometimes it makes it a little easier. I can see that I'm a little off right here. Okay. So I'm just going to take something. You can either take something and mark it, or you can just take something and directly punch it. For this purpose, I'm just going to make a mark inside of each circle. It's my first one that I used as a template. You can see all of my lines here. I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole in each one of them because it makes the stitching easier. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this to all 19 of my signatures. I do find it easier to go and pre-punch these ahead of time instead of trying to push my needle through the canvas. Sometimes, especially if I'm, I do make journals out of old paintings and some of them might have, you know, they might have 20 layers of paint on them. So I do find it easier to just go ahead and start pre-punching all my holes before I stitch makes it easier to line up. So when I'm ready to stitch, I'm going to have all of my holes punched, pre-punched to stitch through. So I'll go all the way across and do all of them. 
And then when I'm doing my signatures, I'm just going to line them up to the lines that I have. I'm going to pause the video now while I get all of my folders and duo tangs marked. And when I'm ready to start stitching, I will come back. And finish marking out my spots. This, this is where you're going to find it handy to punch because when we're coming back through on the other side, you're going to want to be able to see the hole that you're coming through. And I haven't done that yet, so I'm just going to quickly mark the first three rows. So that when I'm stitching back through, I can see where I'm coming from. I've also switched to a black embroidery floss just to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to tear it out after and go back and do the entire book with my dental floss. So I'm going to line up my file folder. And I'm alternating file folder, duotang, file folder, duotang, and ending on a file folder. You can, of course, put it in whatever way that you want. And, of course, you can also stack your sheets together, make smaller signatures. You can be punching through groups of three at once if that works, works easier for you. For this one, I want all of these signatures separate, like I said. Okay, so I'm lined up. My three holes. Ignore these marks at the bottom. They were just for me. I'm going to go through with my needle through the center hole first. Let me just move this out of the way. Make sure I'm coming through. I can see where I've punched my first row of holes here. Okay, I'm going to pull it almost all the way through and I'm going to leave a tail of probably uh, roughly four inches. Let's give it a good four inches. I want to make sure I'm not going to get tangled here. I'm just going to straighten it out. Keep pulling, pulling. Okay, I'm happy there. So I'm going to put my finger down on there. I'm going to pull it fairly tight. And then I'm folding it over and coming back through the back. Now for this next stitch, I want to come through the top hole. So the very first hole that I made here gives me my guide. Poke my needle through. If it doesn't come through the, the file folder, use your eyeball. and just pull it through. Again, pull it tight. Make sure it hasn't gotten tangled on anything. <laughs> Tangles very easily when you've got a really long thread to begin with. Okay, I'm gonna hold onto my tail and pull tight. I'm gonna check the back. Make sure I have a nice straight line with no tangles. I'm gonna hold my tail with my one hand. I'm gonna go back through that hole again in the center. Sometimes it moves a little, so you want to make sure you're coming through the same spot. Again, pull. Make sure your tail is nice and tight. This is your opportunity to make sure your everything is nice and tight. So I'm pulling this way on this end, and I'm pulling this way on this end. So I'm back through this side again. I have a nice straight, nice tight line. And I'm going to go through my first hole on the bottom. file folder. You don't want to pull too tight depending on the thread you're using. It can actually rip your paper depending on how thick and how durable your paper is. Okay, okay I'm going to hold my tail again here. Check here and make sure everything is nice and straight. Tighten it. Pull it nice and tight there. Okay, this is where we're tying it off. So I'm going to cut it so I roughly have two equal pieces. Now by all means go online and research book binding techniques. There's a million of them. This is the one I've been doing for years. This is the one I prefer. It just works easier for me. Oh, nice and, oh, it broke but it's still nice and tight there. Now, because it broke, oftentimes I'll leave a tail. When I'm done, I'm going to go back and I'm going to stick a daub of glue on here and just let it dry with it open. One of the nice things about having your signatures the size that they are is no matter where you're working in your book, your page is going to stay nice and flat because each page is just stitched in individually. I'm going to grab my thread again. 
I think I've got enough there to do another one. And I'm going to go ahead and do my next page. So my next one is one of my report covers. Line it up with the holes. I'll go through the center one first again. And find that hole that I pre-punched. Pull it through, leaving a tail. Fold it over, make sure I'm coming through my second hole. Make sure I'm coming through my top hole on my report cover. Pull it nice and taut. I have a nice Hot line there. And we're going to go through the center again. Now when you're on after your first page you can fold it over and you can actually watch to make sure you're going through the center. If you're using something like embroidery floss because it has many strands to it sometimes you might find you come through the center of it. I just want to make sure I haven't pulled my tail too tight. And come through the second hole I've made on the bottom. Not coming through there. We're gonna guide it through here on a pre punched hole. This one's not gonna cooperate quite so easily. There we go. Okay. Again, let me pull it nice and tight. Check and make sure that everything is lined up nicely out there. So you see how using a dark colored thread on this is gonna may really make the stitching stand out. If I go with the white dental floss, it's not going to stand out as much. But I do, like I said, I like the durability of the dental floss. So I'm going to go back and use the dental floss. So and for this one, nice and tight. Make sure I don't have any thread gaps because sometimes that can happen too. Very easy to go and redo it if you have to. I'm just going to tie it off here this time. I'm not going to pull it so tight because the embroidery floss likes to break. Okay, I got a nice little knot there. I could double knot it again if I really want to. And then give it a trim. Depending on what you're using the page for, oftentimes if I'm in here and I'm painting, my paint will actually glue that down. And it'll just paint all over everything. Okay, so we've got our first two signatures in there. I'm going to follow with another file folder. It's going to take me a while to get this all done, but I will come back when I am finished. Okay, well, I finally have all my signatures in there. Easy. Really happy with how that turned out. And now I've got lots and lots of room to fill my stuff up. And like I said before, I would not normally put so many signatures in a, a journal and I would also not normally just use one uh, sheet of paper or like a file folder per signature. I'd usually use five. That's that's usually my go-to. Okay, so we've got that stitched together um, and we have this nice little flap which will easily cover even when it's nice and full. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now and I'm going to decide what I want to do next with it. Okay, so I've decided what I want to do. I'm just going to do some simple edging on the outside flap and inside on here. And then I'm going to secure a piece of ribbon that I can just tie around for a closure. I considered using an elastic and a button because it could stretch or whatever, but I like the idea of a ribbon. I'm just going to use some simple craft glue. It's quick setting and it's clear drying. And I'm going to run a bead of it on the edge once I get it going. A little more there. Of course, you could use a glue gun, whatever kind of glue you want. It really doesn't matter. You just want something that's going to stick. It isn't just going to peel off. That's why I like this glue. 
And this is just another glue I bought at my local dollar store, but it is a really good little craft glue. Okay. I've got that straight like I want it. I'm going to go and trim and because it is a grass grain ribbon, I'm going to just hit the ends of it with a lighter so it doesn't fray, but I'll wait until the glue is dry for that. There's my other piece. Glue going. Make sure I got it all covered. Get right to the edge. Now, if you wanted, you could secure this with pins just while it's drying. I'm just going to try and be really careful with it. really doesn't take long for this stuff to dry. So, for my ribbon, I've cut a length where I'm going to be able to wrap it around. It does have, I'm not sure what it got on there. I think it got some paint, but... Gently fold that over. I'll find the center of my ribbon. And once I found the center, I am just going to go and do a tack stitch, just stitch it in on the back of the cover there. And then that part will be complete. And then I'm going to go on to, I think I'm going to find a nice little poem I want to write on the front and maybe do some decorations and I will film while I'm doing that. Okay. Okay. So I have my quick tack that just secured my ribbon to the back. And now I'm going to trim my ribbon and just singe the ends so that it doesn't fray. You don't have to do this, but it just annoys me when it starts to fray. I know, I already told you about giving it character and everything, but the fraying is just one of those things that bugs me. Okay. Take my lighter in lightly. Just singe the ends of it. You can see how it's fraying a little bit there. If I take the lighter, it'll just seal that all in. Okay. So I've got my nice pretty ribbon to secure my beautiful journal. And these colors, oh, they just make me happy. I'm also going to trim the ends of this and do the same thing. These are the worst scissors. I don't know why I keep grabbing them. I've got a good pair right beside me. Okay, my file folder and duotating journal is complete. So now I need to decide what I want to decorate the front with. I think I want to go with a quote here. A quote, quote, shape. I think I want to go with a quote. I could run a quote this way. I don't know. Let me play and I'll come back and show you when it's done. I don't know. I might even just leave it just like this. I don't know. Anyhow, well, let's just, before I go, let's just open it up and show you the final journal. Okay. And what I love about using file folders in a journal is for one, you can use up all these old office supplies that you have. I love the idea of recycling. Another thing I love is that I can label the tabs. So depending on what I'm using the book for. And yeah, like I said, I had so many of these old report covers just kicking around when my kids were in school that were never used. So instead of throwing them out, now I can put in, you know, pages of writing that I've done. I can three-hole punch art pieces of art that I've made, stick them in there. I could make little mini albums. 
um, I could really do whatever the heck I want with it. It's so thick that I could also go in and put pockets in here and stuff it with things. Most likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I love how flat it lays. I can go in and just do nice big paintings on my journal spread. I love playing in my journal. I find it really relaxing, just a really great thing to do. Well, I want to thank you for um, spending the time to watch this video. I hope that you make your own. Um, find a way to use up all of that old stuff kicking around your house. Uh, one I, A journal idea that I have that I would love is to take an old quilt and instead of using canvas, make an old quilt and then stitch pages in here. Especially if it's... I, I just have this dream of this tattered quilt that my grandmother made me and wouldn't it be great if I could put a journal of memories of my family in there. I think that would be incredible. You've also got you could do something on the inside of your pages if you want. I'm a very messy journaler so chances are by the time I'm done with this journal it's going to be covered with paint everywhere anyhow. Anyhow, I'm thrilled. I'm happy. That's exactly what I wanted. And... Now Tabitha can use up all of her extra file folders and make herself a beautiful book. And so can you. Anyhow, thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. And I will be making another journal video in the future very soon. It's going to be of the smaller journals I made, I make that I sell. And I'll show you how I do those. All right. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe.